Hi, I'm Ulrich Hage and I'm here in front of Kakteenhage, the oldest cactus nursery of the world. But before we go through the nursery, I will show you Erfurt, the town where we live and where the nursery is located. Right now we are in the very center of Erfurt uh, Domplatz, so it's a, it's a main place. We have a cathedral dome and St. Severus uh, Church behind me. And right now it's quite busy here on, on the Domplatz. Um, we are just preparing for Oktoberfest, which starts on this side, you can see, and in a few hours probably it will be very crowded here and everybody wants to have bratwurst and beer and you know what Oktoberfest is of course. And when you look around here you will see a lot of yeah, very old but very pretty houses and these houses here around the Domplatz are of course a sign of the uh, yeah, we had ma many, many rich people here and of course uh, they got their money from the trades but also from the horticulture and you can still see today um, how pretty the houses are and we are, even in this case, we are very rich because we have a very beautiful city. And we have something other, uh, something else I want to show you because we have the federal horticulture show here and this is really close to here and it's just over there the petersberg we're moving through the night like we're from a different star flying over streets and the broken hearts but they can even touch us we found a different beat paradise is waiting and we bought the lead ago Erfurt was a town of horticulture and also Erfurt was quite important in trade. Uh, you can see um, Via Regia, one of the very important uh, trading streets 
uh, going to Erfurt and leaving Erfurt. And so Erfurt was very important in this regard. And also Erfurt was a town of horticulture. And uh, we have very, very good um, soil here. We have a good climate here and also the knowledge of, of the gardeners. So they tried to keep the knowledge and to give it uh, to the neighbors. So they don't keep it for themselves, but they try to try to, to spread the knowledge. And also the town of Erfurt used to, to um, uh, yeah, make a secure harbor for the, for the gardeners. Of course, in, in ancient times, uh, it was quite common to have a, a, a smaller war or uh, people coming to your fields and uh, stealing your, your fruit or whatever. So uh, it was very helpful. Gardeners were allowed to um, build their houses and the nursery between the two outside um, walls of the town. So you can see it quite nice here. Uh, many gardeners, also the Hage family, had their nursery in this area of Erfurt. So uh, if, if there was any trouble outside of the city, they were safe and inside of the walls, no problem. And in this time, um, Christian Reichert, uh, he was very um, important for the growth of knowledge of the horticulturist here in Erfurt. Uh, he was in, in fact um, a studied um, advocate, you know what I mean? And, but he started to, to work on the fields for his uncle. Um, and he had no idea about gardening horticulture. So uh, it was very funny in the evening, he was sitting uh, on the bed next to his uncle, telling him, uh, tell him what the workers were, were doing uh, over the day. And he uh, explained, the, the uncle explained him what to do the next day. And he was all, always writing it down. And from these notes, he uh, later on, he, he wrote, uh, I think, uh, very big. It has uh, seven, uh, six or seven e uh, equal books on how to garden, garden, do the gardening right. And, and these books are for many, many years where the, it was called the Land und Gartenschatz, so the treasure of the field kind of. And so uh, this was for a long time, the basic book for becoming a gardener, Christian Reichert. And one of the things he did was a Brunnenkresse, watercress in English, and uh, watercress was uh, propagated uh, just in front of the of the of Erfurt um, in the Auenland, uh, Dreienbrunnen. Uh, this is a special area with a lot of water, and so and here is also a part of the Hage family, the beginning of the Hage family, because one of the branches of the Hage family where it start producing uh, Brunnenkresse. And, uh, but we now take a closer look. We going over to our small museum to find out what happens with the cacti. Our nursery is here on this place since about 120 years. We have been here, so there, there is a, 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 a tiny story from my grandfather, Walter Hage. He was very afraid when he was uh, about two or maybe three years when the family moved to this place here. And he was very afraid his uh, play horse um, should not fall from the um, carriage. I think you say carriage, I don't know. Um, 
when the family moved from the former nursery here to this place. So um, this story he told me uh, in his uh, aged times and uh, we have pictures from this time when my grandfather was about this, this size and very, very young and uh, you can see this old building we have seen before and we have uh, meanwhile um, glass houses have been built also this building behind me it was built in the 1970s and so a lot of change happened here uh, the years we lived here the family so the family lived here for uh, meanwhile three ongoing four generations right now this is a younger area of the nursery so you can see here uh, glass houses which have been built in about uh, 1970s in the, yeah in about the 1970s so it's not really young but there are of course younger than uh, most of uh, our other uh, glass houses and uh, quite important so uh, so these uh, glass houses have been built in the former GDR time so the socialist time and quite interesting each of these six glass houses has the same size as the old nursery had before so we have about uh, 650 square meters here uh, on each glass house and this was about the size of the old nursery and of course these buildings are really big and airy so you have a lot of air in there which you have of course to heat so in winter time it's very very nice and useful and yeah and, and good to be here in the summer but in the winter time it's quite difficult because you have to heat it of course and for this reason we have quite a big uh, heating system here to uh, have uh, the nursery run, run also in winter time so and of course it's uh, we we have been uh, installed a lot of uh, horticultural technique so uh, for instance we can shade the plants which is quite uh, important for instance if you are living in the coastal area as California um, but we have no shade houses as you are used to and so we have our shade inside and the shade is also used in the winter to reduce the air volume of the glass house so we just have to heat a part of the glass house because the, re the remaining area is, is locked up when the shade is, is closed. Yes and also yeah, I will show you the, the heating system maybe too um, which is quite interesting and maybe uh, it's interesting for you too uh, we have the uh, so when the these new glass houses have been built in uh, I think it was 1974 my father was in charge of the nursery and he had some a sleepless night because he was thinking about how by heaven I can fill these new spaces with plants in fact it took him about a year and so 4,000 square meters have been filled with new plants quite easy so if you are uh, thinking about building a new glass house don't worry you will find a lot of ways to fill it up with new plants this is another piece of horticultural history these uh, it's it's called in German Stellagen. I have no really good translation, so it's a special type of yeah table which was used for seed production. And so, if you have a very delicate and sensitive uh, plants, for instance uh, petunia, uh, which you want to have seeds produced from. Um, the gardeners 
explored or searched for a way to keep them free from fung fungus. And so you, you may see on the this bench, yeah, maybe bench is a good word. This bench is in this zigzag way. So you had for every row of pots, one layer of wood, which was even, maybe you can see it here, it is uh, just very uh, small um, pieces of wood. And you, uh, they placed the, the plants just top of, of these uh, yeah, wood benches and the air was able to go through the plants and to keep away every wetness and moist to yeah to have the plants good and healthy. This is our cactus museum a very tiny one and it's probably uh, yeah one of the tiniest of the world and my grandfather collected a lot of stuff in his times and here you can see by the way where the nursery is located this is the town of Erfurt and here so the nursery is not on the map and here I can show you uh, my ancestors beginning with uh, Frederick Adolf Hage he was he founded the nursery but to be correct he started the cactus nursery because in the time before his father's run also nurseries I think four or five generations before so the Hage family was here in Erfurt working as gardeners since 1685 so but he Frederick Adolf Hage he started the nursery here and you can see here uh, a picture of the late nursery so you see there is already a rail railway track <laughs> going through the nursery and this was the reason because he had to leave this space uh, today the Erfurt main station is on the property of the former nursery of course so he moved to Daberstedt uh, a tiny place in front of the gates of Erfurt and the nursery was taken over by Gustav Ferdinand Hage and um, in the next generation Ferdinand Hage moved another time but uh, let me tell you a short story about him because quite interesting um, he was a uh, world master in riding penny farthing you might know the very special uh, I think it's British origin um, bicycle and he got several uh, times world master in this sports and Probably, I assume, uh, he was one of the reasons because we have also the oldest um, bicycle ri riding track here in Erfurt. I don't know if this word is correct. However, go going back to the nursery, in his time, the nursery was uh, moved to this place here. And uh, here on this picture, you can see his wife and the two oldest children, my grandfather Walter Hage, is not in the picture because he was too young. And but you can see here uh, the building of the nursery, um, but without any trees in front. So I think you can see very very small trees. And interesting enough, the trees which you can't see here, you can't see outside anymore because. Meanwhile, so they grew big and meanwhile they fell down. So we had to cut them off uh, some 20 years ago, I think. So this is kind of uh, running times. Walter Hage, he was a quite good uh, breeder. He, he uh, um, hybridized a lot of Epicactus hybrids 
and he was also quite a quite famous uh, writer so he was uh, writing many books of course in German language but but I think you can buy some of his books in in several other languages uh, not only in English also in Swedish or Czech or in Russian or Japanese and he was running the nursery um, through two um, world wars and in the early time of um, shortly because uh, before the Iron Curtain he uh, had to retire and uh, but gladly he could had hand over the nursery to his son my father Hans Friedrich Hage and he ran the nursery through the Eastern German time he started as director of uh, Hage Kakteenzucht as kind of private estate owned um, company and later on he was the leader of a department which was here when the uh, nursery was taken over by the state and after uh, the fall of the wall um, the nursery was returned to the family and a few years later, later so I was happy enough to, to run the nursery with my father and he was uh, given uh, he, he gave the nursery to me in 1996 and yeah I'm happy to, to um, run the nursery right now and to see many people on the world just to uh, work with uh, plants and cacti. <music> here uh, next to our stock plants and we are also in the oldest glass house we have in the nursery this house is uh, nearly 120 years old now and it's a special type of glass house which was built in this time so in let me say 150 yeah, 200 years ago you won't find glass houses like this uh, built today. They're quite rare meanwhile. But they are very good because uh, you have a very smooth climate in here and so the plants love to stay here in this house and this is also the reason we have our very voluble uh, stock plants here and in fact many of them for instance here this astrophytum uh, are really really old so the plants are going back also this they're going back to Walter Hagen my grandfather who used to work with those plants in the 1920s so about a hundred years ago so you can assume how old these plants are and they really enjoy being in here and a special thing I want to show you also it's a more technical part so these glass houses have been in fact glass houses a uh, hundred years ago but of course today there is no glass anymore and we have changed the glass to a plastic cover so two layers of, of plastic cover and there is a small fan blowing air between those two, co two covers and we have a yeah like a balloon on the outside of the greenhouse I would call it greenhouse and so we will save a lot of costs uh, regarding heating and it's also quite secure um, for instance uh, when th storms or uh, hailstorms coming around so these plastic covers are quite not sturdy but they can move and this is 
the only problem we have when the cats are walking over the, the plastic, they used to make tiny holes in there. This uh, glass house has a very interesting story behind. Uh, so this glass house was erected by my father when he started working here in the nursery. Must be about 90, 60 something. And at this time of age, uh, so it was the darkest uh, Cold War times and which so we we had no problem probably with the Cold War here in within Germany but uh, of course we have been on quite a big influence from everything what came from Russia our great friends big friends whatever so the friends the red friends from Russia Soviet Union in this time and this time it was a very special thing uh, <laughs> it's very difficult probably most of you will never heard of this but I, I heard um, especially in the United States this technology was quite common too so in Russia they discovered um, we call it in German uh, Rinder Offenstall. So it should be translated cattle open um, stable. I don't know. So the, the, the cattle was kept in open houses where the air can flow inside. So it has nothing to do with cacti, but uh, at least everything what came from Russia has influence on our life. So in this case it was a very special influence because when something was built um, you had to take care of the scientific um, the new scientific uh, things had be taken to the practice so also in building a glass house usually you can see we have a open uh, a roof which can be opened right now but when this house was erected we had in the front over there uh, huge uh, propellers I don't know the word however uh, so the the hot air from inside was removed by these big propellers and so it was quite interesting um, so when you have let me say um, 40 uh, degrees Celsius here inside of the house and you were working on the path behind the glass house and of course the propeller was working uh, so you was hit by a heat steam so you kind of cooked on the side you were passing the propellers and so my father is now in his uh, 80s and he decided uh, early this year well before I really retire so he is retired usually about 15 years ago now uh, but he said he decided before I re really retire um, I have to rebuild this glass house so in spring this year all plants have been removed from here and uh, he removed all the the ceiling so the roof was completely completely open and then he started to rebuild a complete new glass house you see here we have the same technology we have this uh, plastic cover and and this is new we have a wide open uh, roof so we have very good ventilation in here right now and it's very so when I was sweating in the uh, glass houses before right now it's really kind and cool here and I think the, the plants love it and I promised you to show how the plants from the sewing area are going on proceeding 
and for this I will show you a tray and it is kind of special because um, so if you have a look below beneath the, the tray you can see every plant every tiny plant has a tiny pot for itself so this will help us a lot because the plant you can see here um, you have plants which are growing quite fast so uh, I think yeah they're may then maybe it's more than far more than double the size than the plants you have seen in the sowing area and they are of the same sage age so they are sown in uh, January or February this year so this it grows quite good here Aporocactus. Probably today it's uh, Pseudoripsalis, I think. Um, the names change all the time. Uh, I still stick to Aporocactus. This is our collection of uh, stock plants, and uh, this collection is going back to the Eastern German GDR times. And I assume my grandfather used his uh, contacts uh, outside of Eastern Germany to gather all those plants, probably from British sources. I'm not sure there is no, no written receipt or whatever. Uh, so we are not sure about uh, the source, but I assume they are they came in from from the United Kingdom and it's quite difficult because there are very few nurseries um, propagating aporocactus and uh, and also there is a problem there is no written material so it's quite difficult to find information on them there is one publication in Hazeltonia uh, by Eckhard Meyer. He uh, compiled a list of known uh, Aporocactus hybrids. And this was for me a very helpful list because of course we had, um, you see the labels, we had uh, several wrong spelled or wrong understood names. So we also spread some of the wrong names uh, in the world and I'm very happy so I'm working hard to erase all these mistakes and correct the wrong names or the wrong spellings uh, but they are quite hard to to remove afterwards and today I'm very glad we have I don't know I think about uh, 68 uh, different cultivars here and whenever a new aporocactus is popping up I'm jumping and try to 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 get new stuff because it's yeah nobody is really taking care on them of them and so I, I love the the plants there is so 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 neat and uh, I love the the compact flowers and I would love to have more different colors right now Usually they, they flower in pink, all tones, all tones of pinks. Um, you have very few kind of whites. It's even a pinkish white. There is, I think, one yellow. Uh, Brigitte from Uwe Schramm from Berlin. I never heard about more than this. And so if you are hybridizer, this is a good way to A kind of special greenhouse it's really green we even call it the green hell uh, usually we have a shade on the house so to keep it more dark and moist 
and we grow here all kind of epiphytic plants. Epiphytic plants are growing in the, in the wild on trees, epiphytic, epiphytic leaf on trees. And we have here, especially here you can see Hoya, a lot of them. And we have also epiphytic cacti growing in here. This house is uh, kept moist and warm. Uh, but not too bright, so we shade the house and we have a special misting system uh, low pressure mister is this and so we can have here with no additional uh, compressors or a thing like this um, we can have uh, wetness through the misting system uh, to keep the plants wet and also to cool the glass house, the, the greenhouse a bit so when we start misting uh, you can say the temperature the average temperature is going down by about two to five degrees celsius this is also a part of our stock plants so we have uh, hoya stock here and we have also epiphytic cacti and one I want to uh, mention especially is uh, Strophocactus vitii. It's now Silenicereus, I think, or maybe another genus, however. Um, and I was very keen to get this plant into our collection because my grand grandfather has one plant pictured in his catalogues with even with a flower so that means he had this plant about well 120 150 years ago in his collection it probably went away i don't know so when i took over the nursery in um, 1996 i think um, we had no plants in the collection and even there was no one who can remember we had it so I just came across this picture and so I was very keen to get this plant back and I said when I have this plant seen in flower here in the nursery I can go home, pass away, whatever. And so I'm very glad I got two different clones, from one from a private collector and one from the famous collection of Wilhelma in Stuttgart. And some several years ago it's uh, it's here in the in the collection for for some years meanwhile again and I'm very proud the plant is growing quite well and so we hope to have cuttings available or young plants available quite soon but please don't put pressure on it um, we will mention as soon as we have you know, new plants here We are here in the uh, epiphyllum section. I think you, you call them epiphyllum, we call them epicactus hybrids. Um, a name which was given by uh, Gordon Rowley, a British scientist. And I think uh, all of the names are not pretty correct. Even the German phyllocactus is not uh, the right name and we we have a huge collection here probably one of the largest in the world we have about 2000 uh, epiphyllum or epicactus hybrids here in our collection it's a uh, mostly german uh, hybrids so we have a lot of my uh, the the uh, hybrids from my grandfather but we have also a lot of the famous other german uh, hybrids like Knebel or Peterson or Hessing or Morendieck, uh, all of them are here. And we have, of course, uh, quite a bunch of the very old hybrids. Probably this is one of the uh, richest collection and, uh, from, from uh, very old German or French or English uh, hybrids. And we have a lot of um, American hybrids too, of course, 
And so in our days, uh, the hybrids from the United States, are, this is probably the, the motherland of uh, epiphyllum hybrids right now because there are every year so many new hybrids coming up. And so it's, it's really amazing what happens there. And we have, of course, I, I have to mention, we have probably the full uh, New Zealand collection from the Kiwi hybrids from Yvonne and Andrew Brunton from Wellington here in our collection and I'm quite happy to to keep them here alive and to propagate them. Yes, the plants are freshly propagated. Uh, we do this once a year. Um, this is our way. So we do a lot of cuttings, usually between 50, no, 10 and 15 thousand cuttings we do every year and put them in propagation and then let them grow and then they go in the pot to the sale. So we don't sell any cuttings usually. The only uh, reason we offer cuttings is when we sell plants overseas. Here we have our propagation. You can see these are the cuttings we made from our stock plants and we usually do about so between 10 and 15,000 cuttings each year. It depends on uh, the growth of the plants. So if we have a very long winter probably we will have uh, a few centimeters less of uh, cuttings we can do and if the winter is quite short there is larger cuttings we can do. It's a bit difficult so here in Germany we have a very narrow window of possibilities to do the cuttings because we say we want to have mature plants so we don't want to to have very young and um, delicate uh, cuttings because usually they don't do it. Uh, usually they die back or they are probably uh, more uh, chances to have infestations of whatever. So we try to, to do the cuttings when the plant is mature enough but we also have to take care. We cannot go in very far in the fall when the plant is uh, closing down the growth because then they don't want to make any roots anymore. So it's a bit tricky and for this reason we have usually in the time of the summer holidays usually uh, where we do the propagation, which is not <laughs> really loved by our people, our, our workers. They prefer to be on holidays, of course. Uh, well, but this is not the point. Um, however, we are finished here right now. You see a lot of new growth already. So uh, the plants over there were first cut and, and uh, put it in the pots and plants. And uh, of course, those plants are appear a bit more grayish green so they are not watered yet so we wait until they do the first roots and if they had the first roots then we will start watering and it's yeah it's tricky I mentioned um, we have to be 
so we hope we have a, a long uh, late summer to have as many plants as possible well rooted um, to avoid to, to, to bring the plants into the winter without roots which is usually in some cases lethal. Uh, many people ask us why don't we see any flowers right now and of course um, there is a flower season you will probably know but uh, there are people are, which are not uh, so used to, to uh, the growing circle of uh, epicactus or epiphyllum hybrids and so uh, they ask for instance in uh, August or September I want to see the flowers and yes, there are no flowers at this time of the year. Not here in Germany, maybe in other countries too. But so we have very few uh, plants which are, have flowers. Of course, we have Heidinger, uh, quite an old hybrid, which uh, brings very securely every holly um, now Christmas uh, brings flowers pink flowers really pretty um, but there are just a few of them and so this is not the time this is the time where the fly the plants used to grow and we do the cuttings but we have no flowers at this time of the year but of course in in spring so late uh, March to probably early July we have plenty of flowers here so you can enter the glass house the the, the, the stock plants will be will show a lot of flowers uh, so you can choose every day what you want to be happy with and uh, so this is the reason why we don't have flowers in fall of course um, and these are the plants they will be in sale probably within the next hopefully uh, three to six weeks and then we can fill up our glass house and this is our sales area and as i said uh, propagation yes this is the place where the plants go when the propagation is ready for sale you can see here right now this is the place or this was the place i'll show you And it is nearly empty. Uh, to be honest, usually the area is a bit larger, so we have one, two, three, four benches which are meanwhile adopted by other plants uh, because we needed the space. But when we start refill the benches, um, with a new prop propagation we hope um, to have the other, the other plants already sold. Why is it so empty? Yes and we have this year is quite a special one and I don't think it has uh, you, you can blame uh, COVID-19 with it. Um, we have just a tremendous request for Epiphyllum or Epicactus hybrids. We have so many new customers which want to buy plants even in large amounts. So we got orders for two or five hundred uh, young plants from, from one uh, cultivar. So of course we don't have so many plants for sale. And so this is the reason we have, uh, so a friend asked me uh, I can find the number of 43 hybrids in your online shop. What happened? And I said, well, this is the reason. So we are sold out. It's, uh, we don't have any um, fungus problems or any other things here. We are just sold out. And we hope to find a way, a solution for our clients um, when we have refilled the benches here to serve everyone, uh, not only the one with the very large orders. And so if you are going to pick your uh, preferred 
uh, Epicactus or Epiphyllum hybrid do it immediately because I'm afraid so it's a thing I really want to be fair with everybody uh, so we don't have the chance to keep the, 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 the plants for next year. We assume in October we will have the plants in here again and so there will be a lot of requests for those plants and probably the most interesting cultivars will be go away very quick. Here we have the 1912 Hauptverzeichnis, so main catalog, um, and you see Samenhandlung, Kunst und Handelsgärtnerei, so seed trader and yeah, Kunst und Handelsgärtnerei, um, horticulturist. And when you have a look inside, you see there are many, many different things. So you have vegetables and you have uh, many so you can find also water plants but also of course cacti And there are many, many more catalogues and for them we will check in our tiny museum. This is an advertising uh, in the catalogue of 1906. Um, and here um, my grand grandfather, um, Frederick Hage, uh, mentioned 12,000 epiphyllum hybrids he brought from uh, Johann Nikolai in Koswick. Uh, he was a famous German breeder and I think this is the base for our today collection of uh, epiphyllum epicactus hybrids and so this is by the way the largest number I heard of which was transferred in this species. Conservation. I want to talk a bit on conservation. I'm here in a glass house, yes. This is, by the way, the only glass house which is a real glass house. It's the only house with glass on top on the roof. And I'm here just between our it's not the seed bank, but we have uh, the mother plants. You may see it. Uh, the Areocarpus are flowering like mad here in this house. And I want to tell you a bit about conservation. So we are a registered Citis nursery. What does it mean? So. All of these plants are counted and registered by the Federal Office of Conservation and uh, from time to time we get visitors asking we want to see your stock plants and recounting them, checking if all plants which are registered are still around and uh, we keep those plants, not to have the plants here, but to propagate seeds from them. So we collect, we collect the seeds. You can see here we have very pretty uh, plants with very colorful seed buds here and seed pots, I think the, the right word. And Maybe the camera can't catch it, but here are also a lot of seedlings. Maybe I show you this plant here. Quite heavy. You can see the seedlings here between the larger plants. 
So these are the plants which are uh, we can collect the seeds and we can sow for, for new plants which are getting uh, in the sale. Uh, I'm quite a fan of uh, conservation. Um, you might have heard about the uh, large number of Copiapoa uh, cacti uh, just um, found uh, by the police in Italy from Chile. And also in the United States uh, there was uh, a huge porching uh, thing on the coastal area uh, where just native plants were collected by Asian people to, to sell them on the Asian market. And uh, of course in our history, so even my grandfather in his younger years, he was paying for plant hunters collecting cacti in America and shipping them to Europe. It was the common way in, this, in these days. But today we have other possibilities to, to get the plants. Uh, we are quite, um, we know how to propagate them and we can propagate them in also in larger numbers. Of course we, I mean, there are still rare plants so you can't say I want to have a hundred thousand of, I don't know, um, Areocarpus, but if you take your time you can at least have a lot, a bunch of plants flowering and you can collect the seeds. It's possible, of course. And I think it's quite important to know we are responsible for what the plants, uh, what, what kind of plants we buy. So it's not uh, that long away um, you, plants Plants were offered uh, from collection in the wild, here even in Germany. And um, so I'm happy enough, uh, uh, so I hadn't any chance to, to, to be in this business because of the Iron Curtain in Eastern Germany, so we haven't been able to, to collect or to send out people to collect plants for us. So I'm happy regarding this, but uh, today we will be asked uh, frequently, do you have this plant or do you have that plant which is quite rare or even recently discovered? So, and I have the chance to say, well, no, um, we don't have these plants in stock until we are allowed to have them. And this is quite, quite a thing sometimes. So we have our stock plants, they are registered and we can uh, gather the seeds and um, sowing the seeds and produce young plants uh, for our sales and this is quite a good way. Mm -hmm. Okay, any open questions? Many people are interested uh, in the size of the nursery. We have um, about 50,000 square meters is the old size of the nursery. We have 5,000 square, square meters uh, glass house or plastic glass houses. And we are 14 workers here, including me and one apprentice. And about, so we take care about 2 million different cacti. Uh, are growing here in the in the glass houses and of course yeah these plants um, so I, I don't know what what the current current name is but uh, Silenicereus was the beginning uh, Silenicereus grandiflorus um, queen of the night was the beginning of our cactus history when Frederick Adolf Hager um, was apprentice in uh, Saxonia and Dresden on the uh, royal court. He was given, not by the king, we know uh, the king was in prison in this time, uh, but by the uh, royal um, head gardener. He gave 
uh, Frederick Adolf Hage, the young uh, man, uh, when he finished his apprenticeship, he gave him a cutting of the Queen of the Night, and he told him, Hage, stay to the cacti. And we do until today. <laughs>